of the current MEWAS canal and there are many problems. So we try to fix that by proposing a new MEWAS canal for specifically work for virtual machine. So at first we introduced the concept of virtual machine and after that we introduced architecture, design and implementation of e -Kimono. And on this talk, I focus on Windows protection and focus on detecting rookies inside virtual machine running Windows. And after that, I have some demo, so we can see that eKimono can really detect some malware. And conclusion. Okay, first part, the problem of the current malware scanner. So what is a rookie? Yeah, rookie scan malware that try, they try to hide the existence in the system and they can do many ways to try to hide themselves in the system. First of all, they can hook critical function in the system to, so they can hide their residence. They can patch system, system process. They can modify the import rest table, export rest table. They can do in like hook kicking, or they can modify the system kernel. They can modify system code. CDT table, IDT table, import arrest, export arrest, and they can modify kernel object inside the kernel. So on the current malware scanner, you can see that to, to detect the malware inside your system, usually you run the malware scanner inside your system. And this one thing important, mostly the current malware scanner only scans the hard disk to detect the malware. <coughs> so you can see there are many problems. For example, you can have rookies inside your system, and because rookies stay inside your system, so they can easily fool your rookie scanner. They can return the fake information when the rookie scanner queries information from this system. And especially if the malware running inside the kernel, you can see that it can even tamper with the man malware scanner. It can kill the malware scanner. It can uh, make the malware scanner so it doesn't work correctly anymore. So you can see that those problems are very uh, serious and cannot be fixed in the design. The other problems. You can see that uh, mostly the malware scanner, they focus on scanning the hard disk only, but many of them ignore the memory. They don't scan the memory. So all those rookies and malware that only stay in the memory, but never write, never write them down to the hard disk, those malware cannot be detected by by the current malware scanner. So that's another problem. So there are many problems. So I want to have better scanner. So one the new scanner that detects malware inside, inside the memory. And it cannot be, it's, it's not easy to fool my malware scanner. And the malware cannot, or it's very hard to attack my malware scanner, even if the malware running inside the kernel. So I dream to have a malware scanner that has those three uh, features. Yeah, so the next part I focus on introducing, to introduce, introducing my malware scanner that satisfies those requirements. Yeah, so I build my malware scanner for virtual machine. So here's a virtual machine concept. Uh, you can see that uh, basically the virtual machine allow you to run multiple 
uh, operating system at the same time in one physical machine. And in the virtual machine concept, they actually classify virtual machine into two types. The first one is host virtual machine, and the second one is the guest virtual machine. And remember that the host virtual machine control all the other guest virtual machine. And that is a, a very simple uh, diagram of the virtual machine concept. So how about Zen? Zen is the one open source virtual machine, and they, of course, they have the same concept. So in Zen, uh, host, host VM is called domain zero, and the guest VM is called domain U. And from domain zero, we control all the other domain U. You can start the guest virtual machine, stop virtual machine, you can do anything with them from domain zero in Zen. How about QMU? QMU is similar, but uh, here the guest virtual machine is run as a process inside a QMU process. And the QMU process runs the guest OS inside the host of the system. KVM is similar, but uh, you, can, you can see here that KVM, in, in the KVM case, they accelerate the virtual machine by employing one kernel layer named KVM, and this kernel layer exploit the, uh, the features introduced by CPU that has a virtualization technology. So the KVM virtual machine is much faster than the QME virtual machine. So we need the hardware here. Okay, so how about uh, many of those virtual machines? And recent, recently, people proposed a framework named Liver, and Liver is Skype unified framework that can be used to manage the own Skype virtual machine. And you can see that it supports Zen, KVM, QMU, VirtualBox, VMware, and so on. And you can see that Liver Skype framework and on top of framework, you build the application. And application can be can, exp, can use a liver framework to access to those virtual machines run at the, at the lower layer. <coughs> okay, so how about EQMono? The idea of EQMono is very simple. I put the EQMono, which is malware scanner, I put the EQMono inside the host virtual machine. And from here, my EQMono run on the host virtual machine and access to the memory of the guest virtual machine. And from outside, from the host virtual machine, you can scan the memory of the guest virtual machine to detect the malware inside the memory. And from outside, you can also manipulate the memory. You can write to the memory. So you can, for example, you can disable the malware inside the memory. So here's the architecture, it's very simple. You run the scanner inside the host virtual machine. And from here, the scanner access to the memory, the guest virtual machine, and we can detect the malware. And we can do that because all the virtual machine should provide interface. So from the host virtual machine, you can access to the memory, the guest virtual machine. So that is feasible. That's doable. So my, you can see that my design or the malware scanner satisfy all the dream requirement. My malware scanner deal with the memory resident malware because it scans the memory, right? Second, from outside, we can get the correct information even if the malware run in the kernel of the virtual machine. I can show you how I can do that later because basically I don't rely on the OS of the virtual machine to get the information. So I cannot be fooled by the malware. And third, because my malware scanner run outside, so the malware inside the virtual machine cannot attack it. It's in the design. It cannot attack my malware scanner. And there's even some more uh, benefit. For example, my malware scanner is invisible to malware. From inside, it cannot know that it's being monitored by the malware scanner from outside. And from outside, you can effectively disable the malware running inside the gas VM. So we have many advantages for, for this design. 
have a, have a, there are many challenges. So biggest challenge is that from outside, you can see the memory of the gas virtual machine, but what, it, what you can see is only the raw memory. You see the first page of the memory, second page of the memory, third page of the memory, but it, you don't know in detail about what is inside the memory. You only see the raw memory. So our job is that we have to analyze the raw memory to understand the context inside the memory. So there are two challenges. First, because you want to understand the memory, so you have to understand the virtual memory, virtual arrest. Everything inside the system is about virtual arrest, not physical arrest. So we have to enable that we only have access to the physical memory from outside, but you have to understand the virtual memory. That is the first problem. Second one, after we, after we can access to the virtual memory, you have to analyze the virtual memory to extract out so a web semantic object from inside the virtual memory. And of course, the second part, we need very good understanding on the OS internet, so we can extract the correct, info, the correct information. So we have two challenges, understanding the memory and how to get the OS object from the memory. So to solve those two, those two problems, I propose two framework. Any other framework can be used to understand the virtual memory. And even I framework can be used to get from the memory the OS semantic object. <coughs> Here's the architecture. So at the bottom layer is a framework named Any door. Any door can be used to access to the memory of the virtual machine. Even I framework will extract from the memory after we have understanding of the virtual memory. The object inside the memory. And after that, the top layer eCumino is application built on top of those two framework, and eCumino will get the object inside the memory and analyze them, process them, and try to detect the memory inside the memory. And that's it. That is the full architecture. So now I will go into the detail of each framework. The bottom layer any door. You can see the framework here. I split uh, any door into multiple layers, so it's very flexible. And actually here I designed the uh, any door, so it works thanks to a plug-in interface. And each virtual machine want to be supported by any door will be built as one plugin. So you can see that we have plugin for Zen, for Libert, Libert support own kind virtual machine. So if you support Libert, you can support own kind virtual machine and VMware as well. And the middle layer, the middle layer in, thanks to the bottom layer, which provides access to the physical memory, the middle layer in, provides access to the virtual memory. And on top of that, we have some, well, optimization enhancement, so you can speed up the process to convert virtual memory to physical memory. So here you can see that. It is basically, it doesn't depend on the OS. It's about own kind of OS run inside the virtual machine. And it doesn't depend on, doesn't depend on the hypervisor. We support then KVM and QMU so far. VMware can be supported. And you can see that uh, any door play a role like a software MMU. So it can convert from the virtual memory to, uh, to the physical memory. And besides, any door also provide access to the register of the virtual machine. <coughs> yeah, so here's Zen. Any door supports Zen, and we implement the Zen plugin for the any door, the bottom layer over there. How about Libert? Well, you can see that uh, originally, Libert has no interface to access to the physical memory of the virtual machine. So, to build the inter to build the plugin for Libert, I had to patch the Libert, and I submitted the patch to access to physical memory to virtual machine to the Libert project, and they already merged, merged it into Libert 0.7 from August. That means now you need to support Libert out of the box if you use Libert 0.7. So here's my patch sub submitted to the Libert project. How about VMware? Well, unfortunately, 
we cannot support VMware now because to, to build the plugin for VMware, VMware need give me access to physical memory. But that is exactly what provided by VM Shape API in VMware. But VMware, they, they don't open the VM Shape API, so I cannot do anything here. But in the future, if they open the VM Shape API, I can support VMware in my framework. Here's some shape on API, you can see that I want function to read the memory, read the virtual memory in the user space. I can write to the virtual memory. I can read the physical memory. I can write to physical memory. So those functions can be used to access to the virtual memory and physical memory inside the virtual machine. Okay, that's the first link. I can access to the memory now. Now I need to get the object from inside the memory. <clears throat> so to get to the object inside the memory, I have another framework named Eganai. And Eganai's framework built on top of Enidor. And Enidor provides the memory access to Eganai. And Eganai uses memory access provided by Enidor to access to memory. And after that, it extracts out the object system object from the memory. So here, because we want to focus on detecting malware, so we focus on important object that can disclose the resilience of malware inside the memory. So we can first focus on things like network port, connection, processes, kernel module, those things we want to get out from the memory by this framework. So here is the architecture, even I. You can see that I also split, I also split the Ignite into multiple layers. Bottom layer, middle layer, and top layer. So I explain why I need those layers. <clears throat> so to uh, extract the object from the memory, we have two things to do. First, we have to locate the object where it stays in the memory. Second, we need to extract the sub fin from the object. Here's one example. So uh, you can I focus on those objects and we need to locate the kernel module in the memory, process it in the memory, system handle, open file, resist G, DNN file, open by processes, network connection, network port, driver, and so on. So to locate those objects in the memory, actually I don't do anything new here. Because already in the community, there are already many research already done about how to locate those objects. So I don't do anything new here. I just use the already well published research and I just implement my framework here. Now, after you can already locate the object, you need to extract fin from the object. So for example, you want to you can locate the e process object which keep all the information about each process in the memory. Now, you want to know the create time of this object. So, you want to get the extract out the third field, right? Create time. So, to do that, we need to know that create time stay at the offset 70. And create time has a size 8 by, right? You want to know exactly where it stays in the object. But the problem is that those few can change between windows version. They're not fixed. So between windows version, they can move few around. And they move around very often. Or it, they can even insert a new few between. So those offset change all the time between windows version. So that's one problem. How can we access to those objects independently of windows version? <coughs> So there are already many research now. They want to do the same thing. But how they do that? They hard code on the popular object in the, in the program. And they hard code the offset and the, the size of the, the observed members that they want to extract out from the object. So everybody does the same thing. But you can see that's not enough. Why? Because by hard code those objects and offset those interested member in the program. You can 
accept to only the to those objects, but not the other object, right? So just limited to the program. So I have another, another reason. Because you want to get all the object and all the member inside each object independently, independently of Windows version. So I want another framework that support all kind of Windows, all kind of OS, actually. And I want to do that on the main run time, not at compile time. And it can answer many questions. What is the size of each object? What is the offset of this member field in this object? What is the size of this member in this object? And so on. So yeah, here I have another framework, latent framework named LibDI. And it's LibDI rely, rely on public information on OS object. I have no, I don't involve with my Microsoft, so I have no internal information about those objects, but I rely on public information. And now uh, we support OS like Windows and Linux. And how to get those information? I build those objects in debugging format, and after that, I extract all those information from the debugging information. So here's how I how I support the Windows. I rely on React, React OS. Anybody here know React OS? Yes, very nice. We want React OS is open source project that try to build Windows, but with open source. We have the source code. So the idea is that you have Windows application. So normally you have to buy Windows OS to run application on that, right? But the real OS is open source Windows. So you can run your application inside the React OS without having to buy Windows. And that's the idea. React OS is, React OS is free and open support from Windows 2003 and up. So I compile the React OS file header with the debugging information. You can see that I use the plus plus compiler using debugging information. I compile the, my object file. And after that, each Windows version has one object file. Windows XP, Windows 2003, Windows Vista, Windows 2008, Windows 7, and so on. Each Windows have one object file like that. <coughs> so there's one problem, some problems. React OS only support Windows 2003 and up, so actually I had to patch those headers to support Windows XP and VR version. And I fixed many incorrect information in the header of React OS, and also I had to patch to support the recent OS like Windows 7. React OS haven't supported them yet. <laughs> So here's the simple API for API. You can use the first function to get the size of the structure. You can use the second function to get the size of the member in the structure. Third function, to get the offset of the member in the structure. Here's the simple. I want to get information on Windows XP, so I have one function to open Windows XP object, Windows XP service factory, and you can see the, the DI struct size return the size of e, e process structure. The next function return the member size, the create time member inside the E structure. And the last one returns the offset of the create time in the E process. <coughs> so you can see that the so same code can work with all the Windows version as long as you open the correct Windows object file. It can be Windows XP, Windows 2003, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and so on. So the main code doesn't change. Okay, so you and I, we have some API so we can, you and I can get into the memory and extract out the object. You can extract the first object in the list object. After that, you return the next object in the list and so on. Here are some simple API. You can, first of all, you can use the first function to get the first process in the list of all the processes in the memory. It's very simple. After that, you want to get the next process in the list of processes. And in case there are still processes, you call the 
get task next again and again until you get all the processes in the memory. You can also get the process ID. You can get the first DNA file opened by one process. And in case that file, that process opened many DNA files, you can repeatedly call the last function to get all the DNA file opened by that process. So here is the architecture of Egon I again. Bottom layer provides the information about every object in the system. So, and now we support Windows, object and Linux object, concurrent Windows project. And the top layer use the information provided by the bottom layer and it comes to the memory, let's check out everything, everything you want to, to have. Kernel module process is DNN file and so on. <coughs> Here's the architecture again. Bottom layer provides access to the memory. It can be either virtual memory or physical memory in the virtual machine. The middle layer gives you the every object inside the memory you want to have. The top layer is operation built on top of choose framework and it gets all the objects inside the memory and process analyze and it can try to detect the malware inside the memory. Let's talk about the this Equimono. You can see that Equimono requires absolutely no support from the protected virtual machine. We don't install any agent inside the guest virtual machine. We just run the scanner outside, that's all. We never change anything inside the guest memory, in the guest virtual machine. Don't install anything. So we have zero cost deployment. Just run outside, that's all. It's very simple and easy. Yeah, so you can see here, Ikimono is a service provided by Egonai, and we perform many methods to detect the malware inside the memory. Based like cost view, black and white, this checking, abnormal behavior detection, and so on. About baseline detection, especially important. The idea is that at the time when we know that the system is clean, we create the baseline. And after that, when he want to detect the malware, he runs the scanner and get all the objects from the memory and compare them to the baseline. If we see something not in the baseline, we report because that can be the malware. So it can be the kernel module, system code, processes, and so on. Those things not in the baseline will be reported. Cross field detection. <coughs> Yeah, cross vision is uh, another way. Basically, it's very simple. Now we have rootkit inside the virtual machine that try to modify something so they can be hidden from the system. But actually, each thing can be seen from many view. So because the rootkit is not perfect, it modifies something and you don't see that anymore. First of all, it tried to hide the process in the memory. So it maybe tried to, 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 to modify the process list, so it don't see the hidden process anymore. But there are probably many ways to see the, own, the list of, of the processes in the memory. So if you see the list of processes from many view, you can see different things. So it's a clean system, if you see things from different view, you see the same thing. But the rootkit is not perfect, so when you compare the different view, you might see different things. So the, that is the idea of the cross view detection. So we compare object from different view. So here you can try to detect hidden processes, hidden thread, hidden DNN, kernel module, network connection and report. It, if, if you see something different in the different view, you can report, and that can be malware. Did I speak too fast? Okay, the next method, blacklist and whitelist checking. Well, the idea is very simple. Blacklist detection is that 
if you see something not in in the bucket list, you can immediately report that in that will be something bad. For example, if you see if you if you list the post all the processes in the in the memory and you can see my orifice, so immediately you should report, right? My orifice is cut. Well, things for bad things that bad people can install in your system. So we have some kind of blacklist when when you scan those objects in some memory and you see them, we immediately report them. Second one, why this to oh, you know, usually memory scanner can have some false alarm, false positive, for example. So you create the why list, so why list consists of all the exception that should not be reported. So you can and eliminate the phones for positive bit while it's checking. Okay, so how about last method? <clears throat> we process the information written by Egon I, and the idea is that if you see num something abnormal, we report. Abnormal the thing can be the can be the modif Vacation to the critical critical places. For example, system gone. Usually, system system gone should point to somewhere fixed in the kernel memory. Now, if you get on the system gone and check every every system gone. Now, if you see one system gone point to somewhere else, not into the known place in the kernel, you report because somebody tried to install something in the system gone. To replace it, right? And so on. You can see something animal in other places like processes, import arrestable, export arrestable, kernel driver, um, interrupt descriptor, descriptor table, or TDD table, and so on. <coughs> so here is the detection model. We have some checking. Every checking can be can report something that can be malware. But you can see that base light detection can be optional. Why? Because it's good to have base light, but in fact you don't always have base light because maybe you don't know your system is clean or not. So that's optional. <coughs> Yeah, demo. Yeah, it seems like I talk too fast. So this this part I introduce some demo, so you can see that EQ you know, can detect some rocket. You can detect user spy rocket or kernel rocket. This one screenshot. In this screenshot, I, you can see that I run the Ecumino scanner against the memory of the virtual machine. And here you can see that those, those red lines are reported as malware. So in this case, I, I found one, I tried to install one keylogger in, in the virtual machine. And you can see that from outside, you run the scanner, and you can see that the Keylogger installed three kernel modules, three new kernel modules. That's not in the baseline. I, I see something not in the baseline, so I report it. And after that, I saw that, I see that this system code, uh, no, this uh, Keylogger modified three system code, anti-grid key, anti-enumerate key, and anti-open key. And you can see that those system going point to somewhere else, not in the kernel, but to 
somewhere else. And I can even identify the kernel module. And where is the kernel module stay in the file system? So you can detect keylogger, kernel based keylogger. Second one. This photo routine, maybe somebody know. You can see that. I run the scanner outside, and you can see that Pluto rootkit try to hide one process named iExplorer.exe. And I detect that because I, I use a cross view checking here. And I see something not in the, in the cross view, I see something not in one view, but it exits in another view. So I can detect one hidden processes hidden process. And if you can see that Pluto Rookit installed one new kernel module inside the list of the kernel module of the system, which is named MS Direct Direct X dot Sys. It sounds like a direct X driver from Microsoft, but it's not it's not because you can see that it's tied here. You can see the part of the place where they put the kernel driver. And it's not register, it's not in the baseline. It's hidden module and not in baseline. So two method detect them, not only one. One quick rocket, very popular. You can see that one quick rocket patch many imported function in the service dot exact. It patch registry close key, create process as user w, create process w free library. It modify those imported function because it try to hide themselves from the memory. So when those function run, they don't see the one quick rocket anymore. And also, it modifies many important functions of the svhost.exam. Break, close key, load library, xw, free library. So, I can detect that because I, the method abnormal modification, abnormal behavior detects them. Here, one quiz. Modify many things. It also modify explore or exam. The same rootkit modify many processes in the memory. They patch, they patch many important functions. <clears throat> okay, so that that is our screenshot. And now I show you a real demo, not only screenshot. So here is this machine I run Zen, and I show you the list of all the virtual machine now. You can see, so in my machine I have two, two virtual machine. <coughs> domain zero is a hot virtual machine and I'm in, inside domain zero now, okay? And also my scanner is inside domain zero, in the hot virtual machine. And there's one virtual machine named XP3, which has ID1. And XP is here, which is Window XP Service Pack 3, latest update. Now, I run my scanner against this virtual machine. So, my scanner name is Kimono, and I scan the Zen virtual machine, right? Window XP the virtual machine has ID 1, so I need to tell Kimono that I want to scan the virtual machine. Then ID1, okay? Now, I need to tell Ikimuro which OS this virtual machine run. And in this case, this one run XP Service Factory. Okay, very simple. You can see it try to find many things. It look for hidden processes, hidden kernel module, unregistered kernel module, checking export OS table, system code, 
IRP hook imported the rest hook of all the processes in the in the system. <coughs> Can see that. Now I can tell you that my virtual machine is clean. So basically, it doesn't see anything. But there's some red line. But those are well false positive. So for now, just ignore them. Okay. So now you can see that my memory scanner run against the virtual machine and it doesn't see anything. It's clean. Now inside virtual machine, I run one rootkit. And again, we scan to see if we can detect the rootkit or not. Okay. First one. Now I run rootkit, but because actually I don't want to damage my virtual machine, so I run one normal application. But this one behave like rootkit. So if you can detect this one, you can detect the real rootkit as well. That's the first one. I run this. And everybody knows this, right? Resist G monitor from Sys Internet. This operation can be used to monitor all the activities about Resist G inside the virtual, inside the, your system. So this one's very, I think, very familiar to everybody here. Now, I can say that. This resist monitor is not rookit, but it behaves like rookit. It does many things like rookit. Now from outside, I run the scanner again. Scanner again. You can see that. Something changed. You can see there are many red lights this time because I run the rookit. Oh yeah, here's the result. Yeah, you don't see anything here, not anymore, but it's strong now. Mm, sorry, too much. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. It, we detect one new kernel module. Resist G monitor insert a new kernel name Resist 71701 into the into the memory, and Resist G monitor patch many system code to monitor the system Resist G activities, anti close, anti create key, anti delete key, and so on. So you can see the rookie, right? Yeah. Now, let me close this rookie. I close the resist monitor. So, system is clean now, right? Now, let's try to scan again. You can see that even if we close resist monitor, it still keeps the kernel module inside the memory. But the system code is clean now. After resist, uh, resist monitor is closed, recover on the system code. You can see the difference. Yeah, that's the rookie, and you can detect that, right? Second demo. Yeah. Now I run notepad, and you can scan here. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. 
There we go. Okay. It's clean, right? No pen is clean. Now I run another rootkit. And this one is not rootkit, but it behaves like rootkit. This is a monitor, print monitor. And this program modifies many important functions in all the processes to try to detect all the printing activities. Now we scan again. You can see that this rootkit installed a new kernel module here. MCH in driver dosis and it's tied there in the file system. And now look for the notepad. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to run Notepad. I need to close Notepad and run again. Now I run Notepad. And when Notepad open, it will be modified by the rootkit. Now I scan again. It doesn't, it doesn't patch the already run the already run process. Okay, where is the notepad? It's now in the list of processes. Okay, here we go. You can see this time many functions about printing by notepad were patched by that rookie. It patched many functions about printing, end page, about documentation, end of start page, and so on. Because it wants to monitor print activities. Now I close the rootkit and scan again to see if the pet is still infected. <clears throat> you can see that even after I close the rootkit, it still keeps the kernel module in the memory. Still over there, right? Now see the pet. Now the rootkit already closed. You can see if notepad is still infected or not. Come on. Yeah, notepad here. Okay, it's clean, right? No more patch imported function because so rootkit, when it closed, it recover on, on the patches function. So that is also demo. It's my conclusion. By putting the memory scanner outside the virtual machine, we have many benefits. Zero cost deployment. Memory cannot attack our scanner. We are invisible to memory, and you can see if it's visible on the memory from outside. Any question? Two questions. Um, I have a question. Do you uh, do any evaluation with the real world rootkits or real world application settings to see both true and false positives? Yeah, yeah, there are some, of course. So but actually, I can say that I never seen any rootkit that can evade my scanner. So, you want to ask about false positive or false negative? False positives. No. But you can see that, for example, uh, resist G monitor is reported, right? I mean, for example. Just spawn positive, yes. I can say that. Just spawn positive. I mean, for example, does this mean every time someone wants to print something, this will cause a false positive because yeah. this application has a similar behavior? Yeah. So, yeah, I can say that they are false positive. First of all, I, re I report that somebody tried to insert some kind of module in the memory and modify many system code like in the resist G monitor case. That's not malware, right? But I still report. So you can see that phone's positive. It can also be seen as uh, some dirty tricks other tools are doing. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Then thanks a lot. One more question? Uh, one more question. Yeah. 
Sorry to the, I lost my voice, so I didn't perform really well. I missed the first part, so uh, my question is, did your scanner run only on the machines, uh, on the host systems mentioned in your slides, or is it possible to run it even on a Hyper-V host? Hyper-V? Yep. Hyper-V is possible. Hyper-V is host. Yeah? yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's great. It doesn't Thank work now, but I can, I, can, I can make sure it is that it works. Yeah, that's great. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, thanks. Why? Because Hyper-V provides all the interface I need to access to the memory, to access to receive everything. So the same scanner can work with the Amode Fay, with the Amode Fay much. Just use a new plugin for the my framework. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If Thank there you. are further questions, uh, maybe you can uh, have some talk outside. Thank you very much.